Okay, so um, in this video, uh, we're gonna learn how do we compute uh, the mean time in uh, transient states. And uh, um, we say that, so the T, capital T, uh, contains a set of uh, transient states. A uh, very famous example would be a uh, gambler's room. Um, where all intermediate states except um, zero and capital N are transient. And think about this. So supposedly, um, so let's um, sketch the diagram here. Uh, the vertical axis is uh, the number of, say, uh, capital we own. And this is uh, 0. Uh, and this is n. What happens is uh, we may for example, we start at i, and after a while, our fortune goes up and down, and uh, eventually, uh, we hit this n. So then, this length um, is the time spent in a transient uh, state. And similarly, if we start from, let's say, uh, i plus 3, and it's perfectly possible that we have bad luck, and uh, we only spent this much time in the transient states, right? And uh, in this video, we're going to explore uh, mathematics, like... Uh, how do we derive a formula for these uh, time spent in uh, transient states? And now let's uh, define the, uh, the following quantity. Uh, that is S uh, sub ij. And this means uh, the expected number. Oops. The expected number of... Uh, time period okay. this mark of chain uh, is in state J given that uh, it uh, um, started uh, at uh, state i, all right, and uh, and we would like to compute this. And to compute this, we we, we have to first uh, recall a formula uh, from previous probability class. That is, uh, uh, we can compute. So recall. For example, if we want to compute certain this expectation of uh, this x variable, uh, we can condition on y. And how do we condition on y is uh, um, can sum up all possible value of y, little y, and uh, we let this capital Y to be this little y, and then this is a probability of y equals little y. So in this formula, um, this is unconditioned right here. This is unconditioned. 
but uh, um, in our formula here, we have this uh, condition, but it, it, it doesn't matter uh, that much. Uh, we can still um, derive something uh, similar using this formula right here. And now let's derive, all right? Um, what we condition um, on is um, the first transition is to some certain intermediate state. But before that, let's uh, first discuss um, this expectation by the following. Let's first um, consider um, if um, I is J, all right. If I is J, then this SIJ is one plus the expected number above is because um, in time zero, we already visited uh, state i or j because i and j are equal. So this is a number of uh, time periods in j uh, given after the initial state. after the initial state. And if i is not j, then sij is just this uh, conditional expectation. Right, and now what happens is uh, we can condition using the formula right here. If we use this formula, what we have is going to be um, this expected number of visits. in j after the initial state given x0 equals i and what we would like to do is we condition on x1 so what we like to do is uh, the possible state of uh, x1 can have. And this is our uh, expected number of time periods in j. Um, after the initial state, and now the condition is uh, x1 is uh, k and times the probability of uh, x1 equals k. So here in this formula, this is uncondition, uncondition probab unconditional probability, but right here if we have a conditional probability, um, then this is a condition probability and this is i and if we think about this um, 
this is nothing but if we write down explicitly um, what happens here is right here this is our one-step transition probability and now let's uh, think about this one because of the memoryless property of uh, a markup chain what happens is this probability right here is actually our um, S, K, and J. If we re recall what uh, S, I, and J means is we start we start um, from I and the number, expected number of time periods of this markup chain is in J and right now, right here is we start we can view, we start at time 1 and uh, um, our expected number of periods is in J all right and so this is nothing but k sum up in all the state space and uh, this is nothing but s k j times uh, p i k um, to further show um, the formula the textbook have um, keep in mind this S is all states but the textbook has um, this is only the transient states capital T and how do we do that we have to uh, um, have the following claim the claim is for uh, it says uh, if this K is a recurrent state then uh, capital PK to J is zero for any N all right and as a result what happens is um, furthermore this actually implies um, SKJ is zero and keep this in mind SKJ is the mean time we spent in uh, state J when we start at um, state K if we cannot even reach all right this means we cannot even reach state J cannot uh, reach state J from K then how this is apparently this is expected time is apparently zero all right and uh, let's just give a short proof and uh, this is this is actually pre pretty obvious is because uh, transient uh, and uh, um, being transient and being recurrent is a class property so let's uh, give a short proof and uh, um, let's just uh, assume um, this is uh, greater than zero uh, for some n all right and uh, um, then what happens is uh, PJ and K uh, is zero for um, for any M. Uh, this is pretty obvious. It's because if uh, this quantity is not zero, it's greater than zero. It means then uh, K and J communicate. Apparently, uh, this uh, K 
cannot happen because uh, we know that J is a transient. Um, otherwise, K and J communicate. And uh, um, which uh, conflicts with the fact that J is transient. All right. So what happens is now, now that uh, this probability uh, is zero, and this means um, this further implies um, by the definition of uh, um, trans, um, we have a positive probability of a following thing that we start from state k um, and we transit to uh, state j all right and then from state j because the probability of tr uh, transit back uh, to state uh, k is zero so will never come back and never return to uh, state k. And we have a contradiction. Uh, this contradicts with state uh, k being recurrent. All right, so um, which implies this statement is false. And uh, this further implies uh, this transition probability n step is zero. All right. And now let's uh, scroll back a little bit. Um, this further implies uh, the most important part is uh, this is zero for uh, a recurrent state k. And now we've reached the form. Uh, this actually tells us number of time periods. In uh, in J after the initial after the initial state is actually um, we only sum up K in the set of the transient states. This is P I K times uh, S K J, and where this T is defined initially. Uh, this is a set of uh, all transient states. And furthermore, um, we use the matrix notation the textbook uses. Uh, we define the delta function, which is 1 when, oops, which is 1 when i is j, and uh, um, which is 0 when i is not j. And then this is nothing but identity matrix um, represented by uh, this delta ij. Right. So where the ijth entry is just delta ij. And then our equation can be written as the SIJ, that's uh, 
scroll up here. Um, when i is j, we have an extra one right here. When i is not j, we don't have that. It's essentially an identity matrix. And uh, therefore, this is. Uh, and uh, let me use uh, this uh, k from 1 to little t. And this equals 1 to uh, little t. And this is nothing but uh, pik times skj. And furthermore, uh, we can define, uh, we can further write down this uh, equation in matrix form. Oops. If we define something like this, the capital S matrix, we let capital S matrix be uh, this S11, S12, till S1t, and we have S21, S2t, and we have Sp1, and uh, Stt. All right. And let's still recall 1 to t are all the transient states. And then this equation is essentially um, the S matrix is identity matrix plus uh, the transition matrix, the probability transition matrix only for transient states. This is uh, only for uh, T. And this matrix may not have row sum uh, equals 1. Because uh, once we, uh, for, for example, from transient state, once we enter recurrent state, and we'll never, uh, this is uh, our equation for S, uh, which is equivalent to saying um, S subtract this matrix times s equals identity and this is uh, s times identity subtract this matrix is i and which means s is this matrix is uh, inverse if it exists.